Welcome everybody to this introduction to Graphext. This tutorial is aimed for those who are still in the process of becoming familiar with the tool. Here we will try to answer some questions that we have about this data set of a very huge list of Amazon purchases and maybe discover some tips and tricks that you may use further in your research. Without further ado, let's go. So here we have the whole data set, which is a million six hundred thousand rows, uh, which are composed of all the purchases that around 5,000 unique people uh, made. And there's a lot of uh, stuff like, for example, the category, the title, uh, the order date, uh, some codes like identifiers, uh, purchase price per unit, uh, quantities, uh, shipping addresses. We have also some demographic data about the person buying, for example, uh, their age bracket, whether they're black or, or white or similar, their study level, uh, income and stuff, right? And this is a usual table, but what um, sets graphics apart, in my opinion, is this sidebar in here in which the same uh, variables are represented as a sum up of the whole thing that they contain. For example, we have the age here in which we are being presented with all the different age brackets. And we can see how many people are there in each. And we can see that between 25 and 44 years is where most of the population that we have in these um, million rows, right? Uh, so that already gives you a sense of what you have, like a, the, what the distribution looks like. That is very, very important in order to analyze and further set up your mind when you are making questions. Because these are so important, I want to first like organize the project and, for example, set up our priorities. Uh, let's just pin these columns to the left so they are always visible. Let me do it with uh, age and let me do it with a category. And as we will see, the category and age, gender will define a lot of stuff. They are usually very good predictors. And let us see how it works. So if I click in any category in here, this will filter all the rows in the data set that contain this value in this column. So this leaves us with 500,000 rows. And now everything reacts accordingly, as you can see. We have now this blue and gray section. The gray section represents the whole uh, population, that is all the columns that have pet food value, which is in this case 35,000 rows. But what the blue section means is out of those that we selected, that is, in the range between 25 and 34 years, the blue section represents the percentage of people that also bought pet food and are in this age bracket. So that leaves us with 8.4 thousand rows, 1% approximately of the whole pet food section, which in turn represent 2% of the whole data set. There's a lot of uh, percentages and layers. I hope you're following up, but yeah. This essentially represents how, how our distributions are changing, and that is incredibly important to know how our data is distributed uh, across very different segments. So we can see here that books are the things that have been bought most, then pet food, gift cards, and shirts, but this didn't change. This is still ordered by the frequency on the whole data set. In order to see a better perspective of what this looks like, we can order this by, for example, selection. So now we're ordering the blue bars instead of the gray bars that were before. So still books win, but gift cards went up and pet food went a bit down, right? So if we select uh, this particular segment of 18 to 24 year women, we see that uh, still books win. But another trick that graphics uh, has up its sleeve is sorting by uplift which represents a difference in frequency between the selection and the whole data set, or, or rather what changed most when you selected these particular segments. So if we do that, we see a very different story. We see that uh, women between 18 and 24 years mainly buy corsets. This is again, only 36 uh, people that did this, but this is like very, very representative because it changes a lot with respect to the whole data set, which is like people buying books. Um, so basically, what this means is that corsets represent a very, very specific narrow section of 18 to 24 year uh, female uh, buyer. It narrows it down so much and is so predictive. And it makes sense. Uh, hair extension, nail polish, jewelry, and camera film, which is now uh, trending a lot among younger folks. But if we switch it to male, we see the kind of the same story, but with men, right? Computer processors, microphone stands, sound cards, people that are probably making a podcast. It's kind of in there, right? Video cards, pull-up bars, um, makes sense. 
So we can see how easily it, it just, we d didn't even ask uh, what these guys are doing. Uh, we already know a lot about them. So it's kind of scary too. <laughs> this is how the cross filters work. So for example, I can just filter this and this will give me all the, only the rows that are between 2018 and 2020 in these particular dates in the case that that was interesting to us for some reason, right? So we can immediately filter, immediately get a sense of how the distributions are changing and that is incredibly powerful. Just at, uh, you can do everything as you, as you think about it. Now I wanna bring your attention to Plot, which is our chart composer tool, which basically lets us uh, compose very beautiful charts very, very easily. And in my opinion, it's not aimed at just making charts and publishing them. It can also be used as a tool to investigate your data set a bit more, giving you a deeper understanding of your data set. So using it also as, as a research tool, and then when you have a, some insight that you wanna share, then you can just export it and publish it with publish ready presets that we made for you. So let, let us see how it works. We have two ways. We can select any variable that we wish to analyze, or we can just choose a chart and see what comes up. I like to do that because it just, it, it usually it creates very beautiful charts. So let's just select a box plot and see what comes up. So here we have category and order ID. Order ID is not particularly interesting because it's just an ID, so it gives no information, but we can, for example, say total spend in order. So we can see the ball launcher is one of the most profitable categories in our data set. This may or may not be of use. Uh, we can, for example, instead of choosing category, choosing some demographics to see how people spend more or less. So if we select by age and maybe make it a bit smaller so we can better see it and maybe put it like this, which is a bit more readable. We see that mainly all the age brackets behave the same in this particular way, like that they spend more or less the same uh, per order. So that is not that is interesting to know that that doesn't uh, affect our distribution. So let's see the gender, for example, which also doesn't change much. It changes a bit, but not much. Maybe let's put the state uh, to see how look for the shipping uh, address state. And maybe we can put this like this again. So we can see that uh, the PR, which I think is Puerto Rico, uh, spends a bit more per order uh, and Wyoming comes next. Um, very interesting and we can see a ranking of all these. Uh, and we can see also the distribution uh, because a box plot represents the whole distribution of, of values. We can do the same with a bar chart, for example, and this will uh, give us like that. This is now sorted uh, in reverse because this is making the average. So probably on average, Wyoming wins over Puerto Rico, but that is one of the advantages of the box plot, which, which can tell you a bit of a better story with the same visual cues, but with different distributions. So a thing to keep in mind. So if we click on a stock bar chart, and then we can start to see if any sort of segment uh, spends more or less which is always interesting to know. And for example, instead of category, we can uh, say age. A trick I like to do is in these kinds of charts in which I have like a, a sorted uh, kind of category. In this case, 18 to 24 is less than 25 to, 35, to 34 and so on. I like to color them with this ray palette which is very like gradient like, right? So from blue to purple and we can see how it grows. And then we can immediately see what age bracket is spending more in each state. For example, here, uh, this age bracket is uh, predominantly here. And we can even uh, show the values. We can show the totals too. Uh, so that is the average total spending order. We can change this to, instead of average, to the median, which is a bit more representative of sometimes, uh, which you, we can change it to the mm, top 75%. Uh, any, you can do anything in here. It's, it's really incredible. And this chart is already looking super nice. Uh, this represents all the states uh, with the top 75% um, buyers um, broken down by age. So let's just save this. Uh, this is shipping address state. We can change the, these labels in here by this top 75 of, of total spending order. Like we can put this total spend in order top 75%. And here we can maybe say age instead of that ugly label. And uh, for example, this 
distribution of age, state, and total spent. And we can uh, immediately save this as an insight, which will save this in, in a separate tab, which we have here in under insights, in which I have already saved some. For example, uh, we can see here that uh, we have a, a line chart with all the categories that are trending more. And this will, when given, when selecting play, it will basically replicate the whole state of the application, which is incredibly useful for reproducibility and for checkpoint, like you can save and then continue the research from there. And even more so, you can just export this chart as a PNG, SVG. We can even embed it in a web page with the code that we'll give you, and you can just paste it in there and it will appear beautifully in your web page. You can toggle all these things. And just, for example, just save the PNG, export it, and it will be downloaded to your computer, published to Twitter, and immediately get 1,000 likes. So I think that this is uh, well enough. Um, so I think this is a good ending point for our tutorial. Uh, I recommend you just click around, ask questions, find out, and just be, uh, be creative, be curious about it. And I think graphics really fosters that uh, behavior of just thinking about something and immediately get an answer to that. So really harness that power. Thank you so much. Don't be afraid to reach out at support at graphics.com. We can put it here like this. And yeah, uh, happy analyzing. See ya.